Very warm greetings to the learners. This is Dr. Minakshi. You remember in the previous session, so far we have learned about how to control the fraction of defectives and number of defectives through P chart and NP chart respectively. And that also by considering only one criteria, that is whether the unit or item is defective or non-defective. But in many situations, it is economically advantageous to know the number of defects within the unit rather than knowing if a unit is defective or non-defective. Let's take an example. There is a garment with two three threads defects, which do not affect the appearance or the functioning of the garment. So the garment cannot be classified as defective. However, this is a defect. But if there are too many loose threads, the garment should be classified as defective, isn't it? Because the threads would be noticeable and affect the sale of the garment. Therefore, there are many situations in industries in which we require to control the number of defects rather than the number of defective items. The C chart and the U chart are used to control the number of defects. So in this session, we are going to explore the number of defects and its applications with the help of MS Excel. For that purpose, I have taken a problem. In this problem, the number of scratch marks on a particular piece of furniture is recorded. So this is the data for 20 samples. As you can see on the screen, it is the data for 20 samples. We have to draw the appropriate control chart and comment on the state of the process when the management set of goal of 5 scratch marks on an average per piece. So here they have given that we have to find out, we have to understand this process, we have to find out the appropriate control chart and we have to comment on the state of the process, whether that process is in statistical control or not. As you remember from the previous sessions, we have tried to explore whether a specific process is, is in statistical control or not. So here they have given one thing that we have to find out all these things when the management sets of a goal of five scratch marks on an average per piece, right? Okay, and the management does not set the average number of marks per piece. So here the number of defects on a particular piece of furniture is given and we will do what? We will prepare a C chart. Why? Because we we just discussed when we prepare a C chart, we prepare a C chart to understand the uh, to understand how we are going to prepare uh, a data in which we are going to find out the number of defects. Okay. So first, the management set a goal of five scratch marks on an average per piece. It means that the average number of defects in the process is known, right? So we are aware of the average number of defects per piece okay let's see now what we are going to do here so before moving ahead first of all I will just write down here the sample that is 20 and small n value is 1 why because n is the number of items in the sample and how many items we are talking we are talking about to the per piece so n is small n, small n is 1 right so what will be the first step? First step is to find out the total number of defects in the garment. So for that purpose, what we need to do, we need to select the scratch marks, which is basically uh, the total number of defects and go to the formula and do the auto sum. So this is basically your uh, sum total number of defects in the garment. Uh, in this case, basically this is a scratch mark on the piece of furniture. Okay, fine. So step two is to write down the value of n and k, which we have already done. Step three is to compute the average defects in the furniture, right? So for that purpose, I'm going to write here C bar. C bar is the value which will give us an idea of the average defects in the particular piece of furniture, the number of scratches on the piece of furniture that we are going to find out here. So C bar is basically your central line also so you can also mention here C bar center line okay so for finding out the value of the C bar which is also your center line what we need to do we need to 
find out the average that could be done by two methods either si uh, straight away we write down average in the formula and we find it or what you can do you have to take this total sum value of number of defects divided by the total sample the total sample is for 20 so this gives us an idea of our c bar value or the central line value to make this value uniform for the rest of the sample what we need to do we need to put a dollar sign right so this way we got the value of our c bar okay after finding out the value of c bar what we used to do uh, in this scenario, we used to find the upper control limit and the lower control limits, right? The upper control limit could be found out with the help of a formula C bar plus 3 square root of C bar. So we have the value of C bar plus 3 into square root of C bar, right? So this way we got the value of upper control limit and what we are going to do here we are going to put a dollar sign to get a uniform value for rest of the sample. Then the lower control limit can be found out with the help of the same formula but now we are going to talk about the difference. In the upper control limit we talk about the sum, in the lower control limit we talk about the difference. So this is your C bar minus 3 into square root of C bar right so this is your lower control limit and for this also we have to put a dollar sign for both the places okay so this way we were able to find out the value of your upper control limit lower control limit and central line these three values help us in preparing our C chart C chart value right okay so now what we'll do we just have to select the three values and we have to drag it down so that it can be used for rest of the sample done now with the help of these four values we are going to prepare the C chart we have to go to insert option select line graphs and from there this is your line chart to have a better look just make a little modifications in the line chart first of all for better uh, clarity we'll just remove the grid lines as you can see here what is happening the upper control limit is represented by the green line and the points the scratch marks or we can say the number of defects in the furniture they are within the limits the defined limits that means uh, they are not crossing the upper control or the lower control limit for the lower control limit you can see the uh, X is in the negative form and we remember for negative value of the lower control limit which is not acceptable we replace it with 0 and here also what we'll do we'll replace the values with 0 so now you can see the difference the lower control limit is on the on this axis and we have found out the upper control limit with this and all the data points which are there all the number of defects we have they are within the control limits so the control chart for the number of defects in a particular furniture given in the problem indicates that the process is not under uh, any any need to revise or revision the process is under the statistical control and hence we need not to make any revisions in this particular problem right so i hope with the help of this particular exercise with this problem you are able to understand how to prepare a c chart why do we need to prepare a c chart and in what conditions you need to revise the c chart when the data points which lie outside the control limits then we need to prepare the revised control chart right so in the next session we will be talking about another problem in which we will talk about a uh, uh, same control C chart but with a problem in which the data points will actually cross the control limits or we can say there will be some discarded samples present in the data. I hope the session has been clear to you but still if you have any doubts or queries feel free to write in the comment section and please don't, and don't forget to subscribe the channel to continue this learning exercises this learning endeavor. Thank you and have a good learning time.